First of all, I would like to thank the organizers and sponsors for an opportunity to take part in this brilliant uh, conference. As you have already mentioned, I would like to speak about the choice of optimal treatment for patients with metastatic breast cancer, uh, HR uh, positive and HER2 negative patients. We know, and I'm not going to disclose anything new, by telling you that as of today, breast cancer continues to be one of the most frequent malignancy, which is diagnosed in women. Luckily, thanks by mammography, most patients are diagnosed at early stages but unfortunately, despite the most contemporary state-of-the-art new advent treatment uh, modalities, 25-30% uh, will uh, later develop metastatic disease. From 3 to 20% uh, will be immediately uh, diagnosed with metastatic ca uh, cancer. The most frequent form uh, is hormone uh, receptor positive and HER2 negative form, which accounts for 75, almost 75 percent of all the malignancies of the breast. And uh, the question that I would like to discuss with you today and also share my experience and my idea is what is the optimal first line therapy for patients with HER positive, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer? Everybody knows that uh, we have a guideline that endocrine based therapy is preferred option for hormone receptor positive diseases in metastatic diseases and there are with the exception of very small number of cases when the patient demonstrates visceral crisis and what do we mean by visceral crisis this is a life-threatening condition which is associated with ever aggravating symptoms of visceral organs such as respiratory problems liver or hepatic hepatic or renal problems and I suppose you you should interpret this definition cautiously. I suppose that it's not just the symptoms, but the velocity of aggravating. This is what will uh, determine the stra treatment strategy. When it comes to the guidelines on how to uh, choose treatments. This is based upon a number of different studies which uh, compare efficacy of chemotherapy and hormonal treatment. As you can see from these graphs, it is absolutely evident that chemotherapy uh, indeed uh, is associated with higher response rates, and this response can be achieved in shorter period of time, which account for six to eight weeks if compared to uh, 12 weeks of hormonal treatment alone. But if you look at the results and whether it really uh, this increased uh, response rate, will it uh, anyhow impact the overall survival? Unfortunately, we don't see it. The basic medications that we have been using until very recently in the treatment of metastatic breast cancer is aromatase inhibitors, which unfortunately, with this form of treatment, we achieved 25-30% of response Rate. So, uh, uh, time to progression was very short. And it was evident that these approaches required uh, improvement. Uh, so what was found out? There, are, there is a new group of uh, therapy, which is inhibitors uh, of therism kinase 6. They uh, showed good results in combination with hormonal therapy. I would like to uh, give you an account of several, several of such studies. The first one is Mona Lisa 2. In this clinical trial of phase 3, in uh, women postmenopausal uh, with metastatic breast cancer who did not receive any preliminary therapy for metastatic disease, they were uh, subdivided into two arms. It was a hormonal treatment with or without uh, Ribocyclib. 
And the result actually was uh, uh, jaw dropping. The primary response, the primary response to treatment, was demonstrated uh, as effective within eight weeks, and we expected just uh, 12, 16 weeks for the hormonal therapy. So it significantly improved uh, the fact that the patient with a visceral disease will, in very short period of time, will achieve. Um, uh, will achieve good uh, success, successful treatment. And um, in all patients who were enrolled in the clinical trial, the results was actually um, uh, was achieved in all the subgroups which were subdivided within this study. Another clinical study, which was titled MONAC-3, uh, it uh, has very similar design and very similar uh, subgroups of patients. But in this situation, aromatase inhibitors were given with in combination with another inhibitor of cycling uh, independent uh, six uh, adenosycline. You can see that the curves uh, they um, separate immediately. Again, uh, we achieve good results within six weeks of treatment. All these subgroups of patients disregarding visceral the presence of visceral or bone metastasis in the new diagnosed diseases or uh, just disease at the end of hormonal treatment, all the patients showed good uh, improvement and a longer time to progression. More to that, as I've already told you, in many oncologists, and I've told you about that already, there was a situation when um, uh, patients had visceral metastasis, there was a desire to give chemotherapy in order to achieve maximum effect. But as you can see here, the patients with visceral metastasis, for example, metastasis in the liver, demonstrated rapid clinical response and uh, a prolonged time to progression if compared to the group of patients who were on hormonal treatment alone. So combination of uh, cyclin dependent high NAS inhibitors with hormonal treatment improved prognosis significantly if we speak about treatment of such patients. Another interesting observation. This is uh, relevant to the result of MONAC-2 study. This is uh, a combination with another um, uh, another medication, which is called Fulvestron, another hormonal therapy uh, drug. The patients with worse prognosis were enrolled. You can see that in 70% of cases, these were patients who progressed on hormonal treatment. That means this is a subgroup of uh, hormone-resistant patients. And over 50% of patients in this group, they were diagnosed with visceral metastasis. And again, despite the fact that these are patients with higher uh, risk of progression, combination of adenocycline with fulvestran improved hormonal treatment. Uh, even among patients with visceral metastasis. Apart from that, another important factor in the assessment of uh, treatment outcomes, we usually ask ourselves what is going to happen after they progress. So those patients who were on this combination and progressed, their prognosis was still much better. And the time when they achieved the stage of chemotherapy, this period was much longer if compared to those patients who were on hormonal treatment first. This slide shows final results demonstrating response rates in patients who were on hormonal treatment with the CDK4-6 inhibitors. And now we can say for sure that chemotherapy as initial or first line of treatment in patients with hormone positive HER2 negative breast cancer should be closed. Because on the one hand, we have alternative treatment with much higher clinical response with the same period of primary clinical response and with much lower and much more preferable profile of side effects. So we increase the efficacy of treatment, reduce toxicity, and thus we achieve 
much more qualitative treatment and a better quality of life for the patients. Now let us come back to history. There are three clinical trials. All of them are very similar in design. Here we have uh, studies in the efficacy of combinations of CDK4-6 inhibitors with aromatase inhibitors, and all of them disregarding uh, or just independently from one another uh, showed prolonged time to progression. Now let us look at other studies. The same CDK4-6 uh, inhibitors in combination with Fulvestran for patients with worse prognosis because uh, patients here were with hormone resistant disease, they demonstrated uh, prolonged overall survival rates. And here we have a clinical dilemma. And I suppose this is quite a logic, it results in a logical question whether there is an optimal combination of CDK4 6 inhibitors and whether they should be uh, combined with aromatase inhibitors of Fulvestran. And further question if after progression in combination with Fulvestran, we achieve improved overall survival. Whether there is a necessity to all patients with metastatic breast cancer, HR positive, HER2 negative breast cancer, whether CDK4-6 inhibitors should be provided as first line of treatment. This is an interesting study which is called far c fall trial compared um, palbociclib with fulvestron or letrozole which is aromatase inhibitor so the primary outcome should be time to progression second overall uh, lifespan and clinical response as you can see there is no difference between these two combinations that we can uh, observe here by none of the parameters of um, efficacy assessment. Time to progression was identical between the two subgroups and overall response rate. So quality and quantity of clinical response was almost identical and uh, clinical benefit response. So the overall clinical response was also identical between the two combinations. Thus, we received an answer. There is no difference which of the hormonal treatment we combine inhibitor CDK4-6. Now let's look at the, fine, uh, at the um, results of Mona Lisa study and several others. The first one is Mona Lisa 7. What was unusual in this study that there was a decision taken that only in pre- or post-menopausal uh, patients with metastatic breast cancer who were not on uh, hormone treatment before enrollment, they should be in, only these women should be enrolled, and they would be on either on ribociclib in combination with hormone treatment or hormonal treatment as monotherapy. As you can see here, the majority of patients were patients of young age with quite good hormonal status, and for the first time, the results demonstrated that they achieved significant improvement on overall survival, almost with a 30 percent of uh, uh, reduction of uh, risk of death from metastatic disease. So uh, inhibit uh, combination of um, uh, CDK46 uh, inhibitors with hormonal therapy improves lifespan of patients. The last results were even more impressive as at S Oslo Breast Congress we saw that women above and under 40 in two subgroups demonstrated significant improvement of uh, overall survival, which was statistically and clinically significant. 
And the very final thing that I would like to discuss with you is the results of clinical outcomes of a clinical study which was uh, reported uh, significantly uh, uh, relatively um, recently uh, uh, again improved overall survival in ml2 study in, in combination of um, letrozole and uh, ribaciclib what is most interesting uh, in the course of time the longer they followed these uh, subgroup of patients the absolute benefit in ribaciclib with aromatase inhibitor in fact became uh, more significant so the delta within four years accounted for less than uh, six percent in five years over eight percent and in six years of follow-up over 12 percent of difference what else and this result actually is reproducible from one clinical trial to another patients who are on uh, uh, dependent kinase inhibitors and hormonal therapy, they actually reach chemotherapy uh, at uh, much later stages if compared to patients who do not receive uh, CDK4-6 inhibitors. Also, disregarding the period of uh, follow-up, there are no new signals about some unusual side effects. We actually receive information about the fact that there is no cumulative toxicity in the use of CDK4-6 inhibitors uh, that can be observed and registered. The most frequent side effect was neutropenia, which actually develops in uh, more than 60% of cases. And neutropenia is uh, very much different from the neutropenia that we can see uh, in chemotherapy. It is not accompanied with some infections or risk of infectious complications also. Apart from that, we can see that there were no significant uh, side effects in the period of COVID-19, we actually observed the medications with the interstitial lung disease uh, as a um, as a side effect or complication. NCC and guidelines, combination of uh, anti-hormonal treatments, aromatase inhibitors of Fulvestran with the CDK4-6 inhibitors. Uh, they, uh, these are the uh, choices for the majority of patients with a breast cancer and metastatic disease. Uh, uh, HR positive have two negative uh, types of breast cancer. I would like to say that the question of uh, yes, no, first line or not can be closed. Uh, it's quite evident that the majority of patients must be on this combined treatment as first line. But I suppose that this is the, um, uh, the fact that we close this question. This this is not going to be a long story. I will tell you why. Because I've been so glad to see new results of the clinical trial, which is called Monarch E. This is one of the uh, very few clinical trials which test the efficacy of CDK4-6 inhibitors. Um, Monarch E looked at the com efficacy of combination of stand standard hormonal therapy and tetraclisoclip in patients who are in the uh, high uh, risk group of relapse development, and they published their results uh, months ago approximately. They demonstrated significant reduction of more than 37% of risks in the invasive disease in patients on adenocyclic with hormonal treatment. And I'm very proud to be part of this uh, study. Ten of our patients uh, were enrolled in the clinical trial, Monarchy, from which only three, unfortunately, were in adenocyclic group. So, basing upon this clinical trial study, FDA, allowed to uh, include this combination as a new standard of care for patients with early stages 
of hormone positive HER2 negative breast cancer who are in a high risk group of relapse and uh, with a key I-67 above 20. I was very happy to know that Russian Federation was the first state that allowed this combination to be used in the uh, country. Um, and I would like to uh, say a great many thank you for uh, your uh, attention. As we do not see each other very frequently, I would like to congratulate you on the upcoming new year. So good health to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. And now I would like to pass the microphone to some comments to another most um, respected professor, Vladimir Semeglazov. Yes, uh, thank you, Tatiana. <coughs> well, I should say that um, always today uh, we talk about the uh, breast cancer stage four and metastatic cancer and of course when new terms of treatment are uh, introduced or suggested first of all uh, the first stage is considered and margarita showed you this study monarch on adjuvant use of uh, inhibitors of cyclin dependent kinases but i should say there are four studies, and only uh, Morak E showed uh, positive results with better survival parameters, uh, with always higher risk. But this Pala study with Albert Ziklin uh, and Penelope German study in Italy, which where we participate, they didn't show that much of a difference. And actually, uh, there is, it is no wonder. It's not just a presentation, but a kind of a comment. Uh, so more of a comment. So as if I knew what you're going to talk about. Just recently, uh, in March, there was a St. Gallen conference uh, on the that was causes uh, questions that 50 percent of experts considered that low expression from one to ten should be considered as hormone dependent uh, tumors so half of experts which actually is kind of a uh, it's make me wonder because why? Because such large studies on hormonal therapy effectiveness with such uh, relatively low expression have not been done actually, or they will uh, or just not as many of them were uh, performed in ASCO, an American college of uh, morphologists in 2010 already uh, suggested the following concept since from 1 to 10 of uh, receptors is also a positive, exp positive case. It's a low positive, but still positive. But in 2020, the same conference and ASCO again confirmed it. And it looks like St. Gallen also uh, confirmed it. But what, uh, what you're going to wonder about that in four studies of for the studies, three of them were negative. Well, because uh, the different expression uh, was tested for with different uh, uh, methods. So, large study in in, uh, in Germany in Bavaria. 67,000 patients, 38,000 of them were assessed on expression of 1 to 10 and 10 and above. So clearly positive or relatively positive. And the authors found out, and the last, this is my last slide, they found out that with expression of 1 to 10 and comparison of the group with triple negative cancer, the results were similarly poor. Uh, the uh, relapse rate was the, fine, uh, was the same. And all of the expression of more than 10% was a green curve. It actually showed better results. So, so even with such, such high levels,
there is some, so to say, controversial attitude to this very simple test, and the uh, reason is that many of those who recommended it, uh, they expected that there were uh, treatments overcoming resistance, like inhibitors of cyclic dependent kinases, where this principle would, wouldn't uh, would be, so to say, relevant, but it was, well, it was relevant, and uh, there were done several studies with neo-demand hormonal therapy, plus HER2 negative tumors. And also we studied them, we do some studies with that regard. We had some studies uh, in the past. It's important for me to say that the great uh, presentation by Margaret actually quite clearly described the situation with the stage 4 metastatic disease, but, uh, but it's not always happens that everything which works with the first stage uh, will work with other stages. It's not, this principle doesn't always take place.